So let's talk a little bit about the city we're in, Kenosha here. Uh, are there many other craft breweries down here? or? And then what's your relationship with uh, those guys just a little bit down the road there across the border? Which which guys? Okay, so yeah. Only, yeah. Child, <laughs> only child, Jeff. Only child. Only child. Oh, okay. <laughs> the state of Illinois? Like, <laughs> <laughs> really? talking, we're talking <laughs> Zoom, <laughs> right. Only Child, Harbor. Which one are we talking about? That's right. That's right. You're going to answer right. any right. questions. Question. I feel like you were so close to a good right. question. Yeah, it's almost. <laughs> Cheers. You've stumbled on into the Tap Takeover Podcast. All right, welcome back to the Tap Takeover Podcast brewery interview series. And we have taken the show on the road again, this time to Kenosha, uh, just a little bit south of Milwaukee. And uh, we're privileged to sit down today with Kevin and Jeff Breidelman, two brothers who opened their own brewery, working on year three right now. We've been very impressed with uh, not only the, the beer that they're creating, uh, the way that they're dialing in the recipes, but also uh, the amazing uh, label art that you guys are coming up with. So we're uh, really looking forward to hearing your story and uh, telling that story along with you guys and then drinking some beers. Welcome to the Tap Takeover Podcast. Sounds good. Thanks yeah, for having thanks us. Thanks for having us. Yeah. All right, so uh, let's let's start at the beginning. Um, how did you guys get into craft beer, and uh, are there any craft beers in particular that you can kind of point to as inspiration for what you guys are doing now? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, start from the beginning. So first off, thoroughly impressed you pronounced the last name right. That doesn't happen to us ever, so I was, I was happy to hear that. But, uh, you know, craft beer for us started, I don't know, at this point now, 12, 13 years ago. It's been a long time. Has it been that long? 2008. Time? Was one what now. year are we in now? 2019? 19. So, okay, 11. 11 years. It actually started at a time where you know, I wasn't even into craft beer. And you know, I think the craft beer world for us uh, related to Spotted Cow. We were like, <laughs> wow, that's super craft. I think that's a lot of interesting um, to craft beer. It, it, and so we have another brother, Chris, who, who called us up one day and he got a beer kit for Christmas. He said, hey, I'm going to this, this homebrew store in Milwaukee. You guys want to come with us? And I'm like, eh. I got Coors Light. I'm good. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, thanks, man. But he's like, oh, they got wine stuff, too. Because at the time, I was probably more into wine than I was craft beer. So he conned me into going. And then once I got going, Jeff came along, too. And so we all we all tool up to Milwaukee uh, to this craft beer store. And I, I think about $300 later for each of us, we walked out <laughs> with carboys and kits. And we're all, we're going to yeah, go we brew these beers. Stuff. Yeah, it was, it was pretty intense. And uh, that night, we actually brewed three beers. Uh, and I always tell people that was the extract kit with a little bit of steeping grain. <laughs> and I was thoroughly convinced this stuff was going to be like acid water. And uh, it, it turned out to be like drinkable and good. And I think Jeff and I, uh, out of all the brothers, of the three brothers, uh, fell in love immediately with what we just did. You know, we started just scouring the Internet, buying all the books, doing all this Research. stuff. Um, and, and from that point on, uh, the, 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 we went to, I don't know how many trips to Menards we made. And Home Depot Home in a matter Depot. of a two-week period, yeah. we built our, our an all-grain system. So we had this one extract kit and read a bunch of stuff online, and we're professionals. So we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna build this all-grain kit. We went all in. Yeah, and uh, the next batch of beer I brewed was uh, an all-grain honey lager. <laughs> Terrible decision. <laughs> Terrible decision. Um, honey sounded good. And lager. It sounded you, great. You already have all that fermentation temperature yeah, control exactly, setup, right? exactly, right? I mean, it, was, it, it turned out to be a, a terrible, <laughs> terrible, terrible product. But I always tell people, for me personally, uh, that beer failing was probably the onset of the motivation or the drive to figure out why and to keep me going forward. I think had that beer turned out to be okay or drinkable, it would probably have been, for me, maybe not nearly as much of a love. I don't know. But that failure really drove me to figure out why did it fail? What was I doing wrong? And that's where I got into a lot more study and obviously temperature controlled fermenters and all sorts of, you know, lagering and, and resting, you know, lager yeast and all sorts of fun stuff. So, um, and then from there, it was just all downhill. Yeah. Uh, Jeff and I, um, I, actually, I actually did one more kit because I told Kevin he was crazy. I'm like, come on, man. Yeah. Jump into this whole all grain thing right away. <laughs> yeah. And he did. And then <laughs> I did one more kit, which was a farmhouse ale because Spotted Cow is farmhouse ale. And we called it fail it was terrible it was terrible yeah it was terrible bad. and i'm like wow maybe i shouldn't be doing this and uh kevin says well 
you got to read this article and you got to read this article and we guys like kept going through it and i'm like all right so then yep. we went and did the whole home depot and menard trip again and yep. i got my kit my all, all green so i did two kits and he did one and yep. then we jumped in we did we brewed like once a month for probably the first year and then uh after that we kind of got our legs beneath it. we started brewing like carpet creature which was we call was just a cream ale which we have on, on tap all the time here is uh, basically the same recipe that we had after one year. Yeah. People started wanting it for birthday parties and graduation parties. And we started brewing two times a weekend and three times a weekend and then four times a weekend, you know, during our keeping our day jobs and brewing and just kept getting better. Ended up doing a wedding and people just said, how can we get your beer <laughs> regularly? And so <laughs> Kevin, Kevin and I started thinking like, maybe we should do this. Yeah, I always tell people, um, we get a lot of questions in here, like, oh, you guys started a brewery, and how'd you do it? And I said, well, we decided, it, it took us four years. I mean, if you think about the fact, we sat in a garage one day, and I think it was one of the weekends in August, it was late August, and we're, we're brewing for somebody else, <clears throat> one of our batches, and it was, man, should we do this? Should we open a place up? And at that time, I mean, at this point, it's, we're talking seven, eight years ago, we're like, oh, there's so many breweries, <laughs> <laughs> do we want to do this? And... Uh, we're like, yeah, let's do it. And it took us four years. It took us four years of um, like continuing to brew, making better recipes, kind of formulating our business plan, figuring out who we are as brewers, what we want to do as breweries, who we are as a brewery, and, and, and really didn't want to lose ourselves in that process. And so uh, it took us about four years to kind of bring all that together. And then another, once we, once we got there, it was another, I don't know, 15 or so months of finding the, finding the building construction um, you're sitting in what used to just be an empty garage in the middle of the woods and so it was 13 I want to say it was 13 months of total construction time um, from start to finish uh, to get this building ready to go yeah so winter time slowed us down yep we were tried real hard to open up in November and uh, asphalt plants closed so we couldn't uh, we couldn't get any <laughs> asphalt so we couldn't get the parking so we couldn't get occupancy so it, it waited till April we got the parking lot but then everything else <laughs> everything else <laughs> just kept <laughs> You know, yeah, Wisconsin will license, do that. State license, <laughs> yeah, it was you know, fun. It all kind of just trickled downhill. So you were still home brewing the whole time, right? We were yeah. brewing the whole time. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, the brewing probably decreased a little bit during that 13 month window, just because if we weren't working our day jobs, we were here painting the walls or doing all the things that didn't require a licensed contractor to do. Uh, we did it ourselves. So, and then obviously sitting here drinking beer, dreaming about what it might be once we open. So we're gonna do this. And we're yeah, gonna do that. exactly. <laughs> still on our we're gonna do this and we're gonna do that list yep yep <laughs> <laughs> yeah it seems like every time i come in you guys are uh, puttering around on something you know there's a, sc- a screwdriver a drill going somewhere uh but i, I gotta say it, you guys did a really good job I, i've seen breweries that people put together themselves <laughs> and they don't look nearly as 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 well put together as this one sure uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna this is kevin I'm gonna, I'm gonna give a lot of credit to jeff here uh really quick so I think naturally as home brewers, if you guys are home brewers um, and all the home brewers out there, I think we tend to be hands on people. We want to figure things out. We want to do them ourselves. Jeff is an architect by day. So when it comes down to it, uh, huge help there and obviously putting things together. He would be explaining something to me. Hey, I'm going to put this, this railing in with this great and I'd be like, what are you talking about? Like, I tried to what? send him pictures. Yeah, it just didn't work. And so when you look in here, this is really Jeff um, from a look and feel perspective. He did, a, he did an amazing job uh, in pulling this together. If I were doing it alone, it would have been a few fermenters and maybe a porta potty outside somewhere. <laughs> so all the credit to Jeff on that one. Well, uh, Kevin, you bring up a, a good point. We should probably put some voices with the names. Uh, so this is Alex. This is Jim. This is Jeff. Andy here. Jesus. This is Kevin. Again, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I love the name of that uh, that fail ale that you guys did. Uh, you know, we we've kind of embraced the the whole fail aspect of, of brewing. Sometimes uh, we call our studio the, the solid non fail studio because we like to go in with you know average expectations and try and meet those. Uh, but we're really excited about how you guys keep um, uh, raising the bar and keep uh, meeting and exceeding the expectations on some of these beers. How how long uh, before you guys started to realize that you were really dialing in on some good recipes that needed to be shared well i don't know if there was a timeline i think it was uh when we were homebrewing there was a response that we got from people like you know this is a really good beer this you know we'd always get this is better than spotted cow which you know you gotta take that with a grain of salt when you hear it (laughs) (laughs) they just want free beer yeah Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) 
but yeah, I mean, uh, just the comments that we continually got, and you know, there was, we knew if it was bad, we knew it right away. We wouldn't feed that to anybody, but if it was like, it was good, or it was like, well, we can work on this. You know, that was something we shared, and people just kept saying, you know, this is really good. You should, you should produce it. And you know, Kevin and I always feel every time we brew a beer, even though if it gets dialed in, we're like, wow, we can make it a little bit better. We can make it a little bit better, a little more flavor, yeah. a little more body. You know, it should be have. You know, this style should be like this. And you know, we try to try stay stay true to the styles generally, but we try to push the limits too on what that is. So you guys pretty much had a little uh, built-in local following before you even opened them, right? We did, yeah. Um, we had a lot of support coming in, which was fun. Doesn't make opening any less nervous. Oh man, I um, imagine not. Yeah, I, I can I can I can tell you guys. Um, we, we soft opened September of 2016. That day was the, the first time I ever, I won't even say I did, I just, I was super close to throwing up from nerves. Like I, I was, I, and, and you know, I come from a place where, I mean, I've spoken in front of lots of people and, and, and whatnot, and you know, I don't really tend to get nervous, and that day was like, oh my gosh, this is happening. People are gonna <laughs> come in here and drink our beer. And I, you know, as excited as I was, I was super nervous, but uh, we did have a lot of great support coming in. And, you know, and, and really since opening, we still have a lot of people who, st- who were there that day who are still coming today and, and support us. And so it's a really, really good feeling. Our first customer was the first customer of the day and the last customer of the day that day. Yeah. And we were open a long time. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's dedication. And it was. He's, uh, it was. he's actually coming in to do a Brew with the Brewer series. He did. He won the last Brew with the Brewer series. So. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, it's a fun little uh, contest that you guys run. It is. Um, it, Jeff Kevin said, the Kevin says, Kevin says is. Yeah. I'm not sure this is uh, anymore. Well, I will tell you, we're... <laughs> How do I want to word this? Um, potentially, this will be the last brewer with the brewer. So the first couple years we've been open, uh, one of the things that we do at our anniversary party is raffle off some really fun stuff for some folks. And one of them has been uh, a brewer with the brewer experience. And so you get to come in. We actually legally hire you um, for a certain number of hours for a few days over the course of a month or so. Uh, you get to pick the style of beer. We get to develop that style. We get to build a recipe together and then brew it together. And then on a release day, you get to be here as the one of the brewers, and 10% of those sales go to the charity of your choice, choice as the yeah. winner. Oh, that's cool. And so it's a really cool uh, way for us to give back both to our customers and the community, which is something that was near and dear, I think, to Jeff and I's both at our hearts. It's just we, we love to give back. And so it's just been something we've been doing every year, and, and we ramped it up in year two, and I think we're, we're ramping down in year three a little <laughs> bit. And, and not because we don't enjoy it. We truly, truly enjoy it. I think what's happened is... We're really struggling with our time now uh, in terms of keeping up with production and keeping up with uh, demand that scheduling someone to come in and do all this stuff has really been a difficulty for us. And so I don't know if we'll get rid of it. I don't know if we officially will, but we've had the conversation. But it's really a cool experience for those who win it and and get to do it with us. And so we try to make it fun for them. It's definitely definitely a good time. Actually, the Oktoberfest is a brew at the brewer that we have Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Nehi, and uh, that turned out to be fantastic. Yeah, that was Kevin put that recipe together mostly himself, and it was uh, it was pretty good. We worked with uh, we worked with the two clients. They had came in. They knew what they wanted to brew. They knew what grains they wanted to use yeah. and everything. Yeah, and it was fun. That's it was fun. It, it was little, right. It was a easier. fun experience. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was our first experience too. Correct? Yeah, it's our first. That was our first brew with the brew winner. Uh, they did an Imperial Oktoberfest lager. Oh, oh, nice. <laughs> we made it. We made a hint at it. it, it it's <laughs> delicious. It's, uh, yeah, we're actually brewing that uh, two weeks from now. Yep. Getting ready for September. September. Yep. I want to touch on something that Alex was uh, mentioning before about you have a cool look, a very polished look. Can you tell us a little bit about the, the logo and the name? Sure. I mean, uh, you want to talk about the name of the logo? We can split it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll let you have the name. So Jeff and I are, we, we love to have fun with a lot of stuff that we do in, in our marketing. You guys see it in some of the stuff we do here. Oh, we're going to get um, some of this twisted stuff. With you'll you. get some <laughs> of the twisted stuff. Uh, uh, a lot of our naming, a lot of our, our artwork has hidden meanings, you know, kind of double meanings, things like that, that you really have to kind of look at and study to really understand. But our, um, when Jeff and I were sitting down and, and, and trying to come up with a name, we're like, all right, two brothers brewing. Damn it. <laughs> can I swear on this podcast? Oh, I don't you know. can okay. say it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's incredible. We're like, we're, like, we're like, damn it, this is taken. And it's like, uh, that's all you, know, you got, damn it. No, um, figure out, because like, we kept focusing on the fact that all of our brothers were family, were you know, 
Breidelman Brewing. No, oh, no, no one will ever say that right. <laughs> um, you know, and so our noggin came from, it started off with like our heads brewing, our two heads brewing. I'm trying to think about two brothers, two heads, whatever. And our noggin actually became a shortened, shortened version of our, O-U-R, noggin for heads. So our heads come in together to brew beer. However, the, 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 the fun fact about it is noggin in Europe is actually also four ounces of alcohol. So you can get a noggin of alcohol. Hmm. And so when you come in and drink a flight here, you're actually drinking our noggin. Right? So it's got a double meaning in there. Um, we didn't know that at the time. We did not. <laughs> we did not. But it worked out perfect. So, um, But from a logo perspective, I'll let Jeff talk to the logo a little bit. I mean, yeah, the logo's got quite a few different components to it. You know, Kevin and I, you know, we, we like scary movies. We're, we're into the kind of the vampires and wannabes. You know, there's a lot of things up there that you see. You know, it's kind of an Alice in Wonderland. I remember sitting on our porch, and I had out my sketchbook, and we just started talking about what we wanted. And Kevin's like, we got to have a skull. And I'm like, oh, a skull? I don't know if I want a skull. And then I'm like, all right. That's kind of like timeless, right? Doesn't matter. He's already dead. He's going to last forever, yeah. right? So that was kind of the cool part. I'm like, all right, I'll dig that. And uh, But we made him, you know, kind of this uh, dapper dapper guy with a, you know, he's got a bow tie. He's got a hot bolo. You know, and there's a, we put the cards in his hat like the Mad Hatter. Uh, it's not a train ticket. It's a, it's a two and a seven of hops. So, I mean, <laughs> it's two, you know, we always say it's, to, it's two guys seven days a week. And that's what, that's what the plan was when we started. Yep. So it kind of, kind of all comes together. Two seven offsuit is also statistically the worst starting. Yeah. Game. <laughs> <laughs> By the way. Yeah. I think Again. if you get two seven of hops, you're yeah. in pretty good chance. Yeah, you're in good chance. Yeah, I think it's a, it's the first thing that I noticed about the brewery before I even tried the beer was uh, was the logo. You know, it really stands out in in a industry of very crowded logos and crowded branding. You guys really do stand out, and that's that's some that's very tough to do. So, hats off to you. Thank right. you. Right, and I you know, I didn't create the logo. I sketched it, and we handed it off to one of the local graphic artists who Kevin's father in law uh, recommended. Yeah. And, she she took two whacks at it and uh, it was perfect on the second whack. I think we changed the polka dots I and think, that was I it. I think Jeff and I were like, should we just change something because it's <laughs> too easy? <laughs> like, are we missing something? Like, what's going on? Here? She came back yeah. with the first one. And we're like, oh dang, that's yeah. like what well, totally what we envisioned. Yeah, it was it was <laughs> probably one of the easier parts of what we did, which sounds funny, but. <laughs> <laughs> And then just coming back to me now, but the the circle up there that you see with the gray stripes is kind of like uh, if you were to drop a water in a smooth pot from the top, it would be ripples. That's yeah. kind of what that represents. Wow. So there's meaning all over there's, this place. There's, there's, there's all, all kinds. Yep. If I keep looking at it, I'll come up with something else probably. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we definitely want to uh, circle back to the the label art, but uh, one question that we always like to ask all the brewers that come on the show is if you could kind of uh, tell your brewery's story uh, by taking over the taps at the Tap Takeover podcast. If we were to give you four or five taps, if you could pick four or five of your favorite beers that you guys produce and kind of tell the story of your brewery uh, through those beers. Wow. Wow. Um, Well, I think you've got the posters all up right now. Probably. Can I, yeah, I'll just say that we, we're brewing somewhere around 70 different beers. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but okay, so yeah, so one of the nice things about our brewery is the fact that right now um, we're on a two-barrel system, and, and it, it allows us a flexibility to brew a lot of different beers and turn them over really quickly. Yeah, it's basically uh, a glorified homebrew system. Yeah, a little bit. However, we do have some staples uh, that I will note were not staples when we were homebrewers. Um, Correct. It, they, they become staples as new styles have, have developed in the markets, and we've worked on those styles and, and developed them. And so, you know, I think for me, me and Jeff may have five different beers that don't align. I'm, I'm kind of the, the hazy, happy guy and sour. And so I think where I'll start is uh, Space Monkey Sucker Punch. Okay. And so <laughs> Space Monkey Sucker Punch is actually a sour New England IPA. And I think it is one of the, one of the beers that really sets us apart. Um, when we have it, uh, when you drink it, it's like a it's like a sour tart lemonade uh, with no fruit added. It's all it's all done through uh, the brewing process and through hops. We use lemon drop hop in that, and uh, it is just the most refreshing sour beer that I've had uh, that we make, and, and I love it. it. It's just great. You get the hoppiness, you get the bitterness, you get the sour, and it all comes together really nicely. I think after that, for me, 
It moves into Lupulin Fallout. Lupulin Fallout is our tropical New England IPA. You can see the poster over here in the corner. That one for me is delicious. It's one of those ones when it's on, I'm drinking it. Um, after yeah, that, I, I agree with that. After that, I can move into a few different ones. And so there's still some that are being worked on, but we have a series of beer um, that we can talk about the artwork too if you want, but it's called Hop Hop Boom, Hop Rocket Rider, and Hop Bala. And they're, they're all brothers and sisters of each other, whatever, whatever gender you want to go with. But it's the same base recipe, mostly the same hops throughout the entire thing. It's just a matter of how we use them and how much of what we're using. And so Hop Hop Boom's our pale ale version of it. Hop Rocket Rider is the IPA version. And then Hop Lala is the Imperial IPA version of it. They're all hazy. They're all fruity and tropical and, and delicious. And, and so for me, when I think about the five beers that I want on tap, I would take those five. <laughs> so is there one particular hop that is really your favorite? Um, I'll tell you that there's not one particular hop that's my, my favorite. I'll tell you there's a particular region, which is New Zealand. New Zealand uh, and potentially fall into Australia. There are, they have um, some amazing hops coming out of those regions right now. Yeah, the, um, the fruity esters are getting out of their hops. Are incredible. Uh, just juicy fruit flavors, tropical stone fruit you name it, papaya. I mean, these flavors that are coming out of these hops are just ridiculous. Yeah, at the end of the day. I mean, we grew up brewing with, like, Galena. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Great Cas- hop. Great Cascade. hop. But, um, <laughs> Cascade. Centennial. And now you're, now you're dealing with hops right. that are just really bringing some really, really, really funky, fun, fruity flavors. And so right. uh, that's tender where I fall. Now, I will say I want to give love to our reds. Um, I think we do some amazing reds. Clown Casket, Squirted Scotsman, Imperial Red, We Heavy are, are both delicious delicious beers and in the winter time when it's peaceful cold protest. out peaceful protest our barrel aged version of con casket out of this world nice yeah i'm i'm actually not that far off from where kevin is you know um i was not a sour guy up until we started brewing some kettle sours and i think it was just that i was drinking sours versus a kettle sour for me and it was just a uh, too much but when we got to the kettle sours i mean the carney ride and space monkey sucker punch and um uh, not much came out. What's the Richard's Rising? Richard's Rising. Thank you. And his bells. And his bells. Yes. Oh, oh yes. So it's good. tough to get. <laughs> okay. They're all good. Yeah, like you said, handles. <laughs> yeah, like you said, there was seventy of them. Oh, yeah, uh, that a we lot. do. But uh, yeah, I'm. I grew up, you know, on fixed gear. After a while, so I mean, the Reds are kind of in my favorite, my my realm of. Uh, yes, this is what I want to drink. So yes, the Carney or uh, Clown Casket and Peaceful Protests are probably two of my favorites. Awesome. So, so for our listeners, what are what are some of your staples that are most often found on your tap lines? Oh, that's, uh, that's yeah. The only staple I think you're going to find here right now, uh, and that'll change. But the only staple right now is probably our carpet creature cream ale. Okay. Um, and a lot of that has to do with you know we're still we're still coming across a lot of people who are being introduced to craft beer, uh, much like I was or Jeff was I don't know ten years ago, you know when Spotted Cow was craft. <laughs> for us and again it's not that it's not craft it's just it's it's very for me kind of that right first step into craft um craft beer because it's not aggressive it's not in your face it's not over, overly bitter um and so the carpet creature we keep it around uh, because we still get a lot of folks that come and say hey uh i really i just drink miller light every day what should i have this is a great great first step as we grow our one of our plans co- this year fingers crossed is to go from our five tap lines that we have right now up to 15. And once we get to that 15 mark, you're going to see more of a five or six standard beers on more often than not. Right. Currently, we have just five beers on tap. Yep. So it's hard to keep one or, you know, keep more than one, I should say. Well, you guys still have a little footprint in the area, right? You do distribute to some some bars and some some. Uh, we have started stores. Dis- we have started distribution to bars. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think we've got seven accounts currently. Okay. Uh, Kevin does all the distribution. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not very many. It's just a couple of local, um, and it's more just keeping our name out there. And, yeah. Uh, we're not pushing it, and part of that not pushing it is the fact that we got we got to keep five tap lines flowing here. Yeah. Uh, any more than what we have right now, and I, we'd be struggling mightily to, to keep up with our tap lines here. Right. Yeah, I think one thing that we really appreciate that, you know, the beer community really appreciates is the the, the approach that you guys have taken to building your brand, building your brewery and, and the beers that you guys are doing. A lot of some breweries will, will come right out and say, these are our five staples. This is what we're doing and kind of build off of that. 
other breweries like you guys, and, and we really appreciate your your approach, is kind of throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks. You know, the fact that you guys have done already in the last three years seventy different uh, beers to your line, I think, is a credit to to that approach. You know, and and some some beers are going to be successful, some less so. But you know, the fact that you guys are willing to throw it all out there, I, I don't know. It's refreshing. It's very refreshing. Yeah, it's too much fun to brew beer than keep brewing the same five six over and over. So you know, it's. Uh, we got still have a homebrew mentality, but we want to have, you know, we want to have fun and let make sure everybody else is having fun. Yeah. You know, so we're always throwing something at the wall. We have a level of craziness here, I think, too. I'm just going to speak for today. <laughs> <laughs> so today we brewed a Thin Mint Girl Scout cookie stout, uh, milk stout. Uh, never done it before. Just, you know, we took a, one of our milk stout recipes, kind of did a little, few edits on it. We actually just dumped a ton of cookies into the mash, threw some, <laughs> threw some, threw some chocolate into the boil, and not at random obviously we planned it out but you know we're willing to take those kind of risks and 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 go out and do something different and just to see to your point does it stick is it good is it something that we're we're gonna sadly watch go down the drain Um, (laughs) which has happened a few times but um you know you gotta take risks i think you gotta continually push limits i mean right now we're drinking a beer called uh summit at or no yes yeah, this is some of that. Yeah, we, we had a name, we had a name and it was uh, changed. Changed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's these, these weird things about you can't use the assist. same name that yeah. other breweries yeah, use. Yeah, little cease and assist thing yeah. shows up, and you're like, yeah. "What? <laughs> you're in New Jersey." Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So this is called something like that. It's an orange dreamsicle milkshake IPA, which yep. is we haven't brewed it in probably over a year, yeah. and it was one of those things that uh, when we brewed it before we were putting in a lot of fruit and things of that one didn't make it sh- very shelf stable and uh kevin wanted to so we're not brewing it until we can figure out how to how to make it shelf stable you know and we went through a bunch of iterations and i think the our process getting up to that where we were making some orange and some grapefruit ipas and then we did the milkshake yeah. ipas the, the wild berry and we're like all right i okay. think i think we know what we're doing now let's yeah. let's try this again and it's pretty pretty fantastic yeah i was thoroughly impressed <laughs> very good so if uh, if we could uh, wrap up the tap takeover and maybe put one last beer that's gonna kind of get the beer nerds out of bed do you guys have any special release stuff what to what could we talk about for that last tap uh, pre-dawn pre-dawn right i mean uh we try to do three or four different releases throughout the year but pre-dawn is by far the beer that we should we should talk about it. <laughs> yeah. well, I, I'll tell you what, uh, that's a perfect segue because I actually brought a bottle with me. So uh, we're going to pop that open, take a little break right now, and uh, we'll be back after some beer news with uh, more from uh, from Jeff and Kevin and uh, a little bit of a tasting of this, this pre-dawn that we're talking about. Beautiful. Awesome. Extra, extra. That's right. Welcome to... Beer News, certified fresh as of March 21st, 2019, and sponsored by Three Cellars, Menominee Falls. Make sure to stop by and grab a beer with Gino. This episode's easily accessible beer is Lost in the Sauce version 2. Lost in the Sauce is a hazy, juicy IPA from the Explorium Brew Pub in Greendale. Mike, Kyle, and Adam have been dialing in and tweaking this recipe for a while now, and this version is definitely where it's at. You can find Lost in the Sauce version 2 in 16 ounce four packs at most craft beer shops and at the Explorium Brew Pub. Hashtag Mall Beers. This weekend's new beer releases in Milwaukee is a hot one. Eagle Park's Booze for Breakfast is back at 11 a.m. this Saturday, March 23rd. Members only can pick up on Friday. 1840's Drinking Chocolate line continues this weekend with Vanilla Drinking Chocolate. Just make sure you stop by right after Eagle Park's Booze for Breakfast, as these are both sure to go quick. Festival season is almost upon us, and we here at the TTP are just as excited as you. Here's a couple that we can't wait to attend this year. Saturday, April 20th, brings us Joint Beer Fest at Eagle Park Brewing. This fest is all about joint collaborations, nine of them to be exact. These collaborations are with big name hot breweries too. Microphone, Untitled Art, Drecker, Lupulin, and newly announced Phase 3 Brewing. That's right people, former more brewer Sean's independent venture. Fest scores will get to sample all nine collaborations and will get a mixed six pack to take home. Saturday, April 27th brings you two events. 
For those lucky enough to get tickets is Microphone Smells Like a Beer Fest. In its second year, Mike has amped up his annual celebration of the barrel-aged bean spirit release to new levels, increasing in size and absolutely ridiculous ridiculous list of nationwide breweries are attending and we will have the inside scoop with mike for a preview very soon also on saturday april 27th is three cellars menominee falls celebration of its third anniversary party with gino 80 style and enjoy a fantastic tap list that includes this year's kbs barrel aged liquid soul and mama bear's sour cherry pie to name a few smoked at 225 will be out front for food as per usual as well Mark your calendars for Saturday, May 5th for this year's Great Taste of the Midwest in-person ticket release. Great Taste of the Midwest is the premier beer festival in the Midwest and is voted one of the best in the country every year. Held on the second Saturday in August every year in Madison, we advise getting your tickets now instead of gambling with the mail-in lottery. Make sure you check out in-person ticket sites as they have changed this year to accommodate the crowds that usually gather for an overnight line party. Stay tuned for an upcoming full TTP episode with the minds behind great taste for an update on this year's festivities. And this has been Beer News. All right, we're back. Another awesome edition of Beer News. I don't know how you do it. Let's get into this first beer. What do we got? So as we were talking about, this is pre-dawn. This is a a special release by you guys. You actually bottle this, which I would assume most of the beer you brew isn't packaged at all. No. (laughs) No. (laughs) Bottling is one of those days you kind of dread around here. I mean, if if you can think about a two-barrel system and and the fact it takes us about 10 hours to to bottle something like this up it's uh oh, man. it's a long day where <laughs> we're, we got a two head manual bottle filler and it's uh it's quite if the you process. homebrew you know what we're talking about yeah because <laughs> that is exactly what it it's is. a counter pressure filler but it <laughs> just yeah, you right. know it takes forever forever <laughs> i would love to bottle a lot more but just based on the time and effort it takes it's uh it's something we don't do as often so tell us uh, what are we drinking here so we are actually drinking uh, pre-dawn, and pre-dawn is our bourbon barrel aged Russian Imperial Stout. This one was aged in a bullet bourbon barrel. Uh, I will tell you that 2019 version is in a Heaven Hill barrel, and the only reason for the change has nothing to do with the change in whiskey, more so as we look for a barrel that was dumped really, really recently, and we make sure that we're getting the, the, the barrel as wet as possible uh, when we get it in-house. And so we work with our supplier really closely on dump dates and, and pickup dates, and, and we're there. And, uh, and who is your supplier? Uh, the Barrel Broker uh, wow. in Milwaukee. Uh, so. Listen back to our previous episode with the Barrel Broker <laughs> if you want to learn more about the Barrel Broker yes. business. Yes, he's a good guy, and he, he really treats us right. And so he, he swears by clean, tight, and wet. Yeah, it's, and <laughs> that's, really what, it that's huh. really what it is. That's really what it is. That's not bad to go by. <laughs> That's what we That's said. What we, said. <laughs> <laughs> we said you got to put that on a t-shirt sometime. Yeah. Right? No doubt. Yeah, so could you guys give us some tasting notes? What to, what sort of malt went into this one, and, and what kind of things should we be picking up? And how do you think it did in that barrel? Do you, do you think it picked up the, the requisite flavors that you wanted? or uh, what, how, do, how do you think this one turned out? Was it, was it pre-dawn that uh, we debated over whether or not to pull it out? No. That was, that was uh, pre, that pre- was, no, that was a uh, peaceful protest. Peaceful protest. Um, Never mind. Yeah, so pre dawn, just on some basics, you, from a malt perspective, you know, it's 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 mainly Mars Otter. <laughs> you know, it's got that big malty character going on to it. Uh, I can't dwell into too much because I signed a confidentiality agreement, <laughs> but we do some special processing on our beers. And, and so when, when you come to our dog and, and you have a beer that is above 9%, it has gone through a number of different processing um, from us. Uh, we do not use any sugar outside of Belgians. We do not use any DME liquid, anything um, to boost alcohol. And so when I tell you that this beer went into the barrel at 14.7%, that was 14% malt, you're which is... Right. You're getting Jim hard right it's, now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, <laughs> boing! <laughs> this, this brew session was an 18-hour day. Which That's is, a lot of boiling, right? Which is a long wow. day. Uh, actually, it's not done in the boil. Um, oh. It's done through Ooh. a different process. And so uh, we, don't, we, don't talk, uh, we don't talk about it uh, because it's something that we love to do here. Uh, we have a few beers, and I'll talk about those in a second, but um, <laughs> in which we do it... Uh, 
Okay, fine. Three to the third uh, is a beer that we have oh coming no. out this fall. Uh, Ooh, breaking is, news! It's breaking. This is you guys this are hearing it gotcha. first. This gotcha is, journalism at its best. That takeover first, right this here. Is um, Pro tip: Put one this, beer in the this Kevin fall, and he spills we it. We have a uh, <laughs> right? we have sip. our <laughs> first release of our barley wine coming. All right, um, it went into the barrel at seventeen point four percent. Good, um, good. We we believe barley wine should be barley wines, and so uh, <laughs> it's big, it's bold, it's in your face, it's like syrup in a glass, and it's delicious. And, and so this fall, that's coming, but. Back to Predon. <laughs> <laughs> Snip it. <laughs> just, Snip just, it. A just, just a tease. Just going to do that to us. <laughs> just a tease. But yeah, so so Predon, it's it's your traditional Russian, you know, Russian Imperial grains. It's, it's got the dark malts in there. It's got the you know, a little bit of the chocolate, but ma- basically roasted barley. We tend to lean towards like a Black Prince here from Breeze, or a de bitter black malt. Mm-hmm. And part of that is a lot of times you find in these in these dark big stouts, sometimes the bitterness of those darker malts tends to take over the flavor. And so we look for ways to smooth that out for our customers. Uh, and we find that using some debittered malt in replacement of just a straight patent or black malt tends to help that. You know, and, and obviously barrel aging will help that too over time. But this beer uh, ages for about nine to ten months in the barrel. Mm. Um, this one was I think just right at nine and a half actually. Um, before we take it out and bottle it for a few months as well before we sell it. So it allows it, 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 it's enough time for that beer to really soak into that wood. Yeah, we didn't even touch it. Yeah. We didn't, didn't even touch it, it, didn't taste it, didn't do anything until now. You really months. want to give this beer time to, 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 to get past the bourbon and get into the oak and those vanilla, um, right. those vanilla, those toasty, those toasty flavors that, um, that helps smooth know, get it past out, that five know. or six month mark in a, in a barrel. So that's what this one is. And it's, I love it. It's one of my favorites here. Yeah, it's tasting really nice. And this was released in uh, December, so Correct. we're drinking this in March now. A few, you know, a few months of, of uh, cellar aging, but this is. I don't know. It's really nice. It, it's got those sweet notes. Uh, I'm definitely picking up the vanilla and, and mm-hmm. some of that char flavor. I, I I would put this up against just about any barrel aged stout out there. This is fantastic. And coming in at 14. Yeah. percent You're talking about a big boy. And it's hidden. It's hidden. You, you I don't drink it and think 14. percent I'm not getting the burn. I'm not getting. I mean, I might get a little warming in my chest, but yeah, it's you know. a little boozy, but not in a bad way. It's not yeah. hot. It's no. it's just warming you up on yeah. that side. Yeah. yeah, like I said in during break, my cheeks are turning red. You know, that's, <laughs> what, that's what this beer does to me. It, you know, it warms you up a little bit. Absolutely great with a cigar. If anybody here smokes cigars, I don't. But if you do, great with a cigar. Oh, I, could, I could see it with a cigar. I definitely yeah. could. I mean, the the booziness, like Jim said, it really folds into the the flavors of the malts and the barley's and the beer. It's yeah. Just, it's quite tasty, and I think it would age very well too in the bottle. So that that's actually it brings us to another interesting question that we like to ask a lot of our brewers. Uh, where do you guys stand on cellar aging? Uh, a lot of our brewers that we've spoken with say the beer is perfect. We've aged it for you. We've done all the work, you idiot. Drink it now. And some some brewers say age it. Get get nuts. You know, buy two bottles, drink one now, and age it, and do a little experiment. Where where do you guys kind of fall on that? Well. I think I know where Kevin falls, but uh, you know I'm I'm more the guy who buys it and says he's going to sell it and drinks it the next day. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I I just have no hold back on it. So it's one of those things where I'd like to sell it because I think some of these beers would be very good. Like this one here, we actually bottled this in September and we released it in December, so it had three months of age oh. already, and I think that might have had some of the help with it. But I think this thing could last you know two or three years, and we've got a couple bottles stashed that we're going to keep trying yeah yeah i mean i where i stand on it is do what you like you know buy a couple drink one now drink one in a month drink one in three months drink one in three years i if if you like doing that do it we tend not to release a beer before it's ready to drink that's what i would say um we take as one of our foundations as a brewery every beer we we use the utmost care and time for and it hits our tap lines or it hits the the bottle release when we think it's ready to drink Um, one of the things that we don't do here is use chemicals really in our processing so we use no clarifying agents we use nothing we use time and temperature for all of our products it takes longer and we're committed to that from a beer perspective and so we take our beer to near freezing temperatures Uh, we let it sit there for a period of time before we actually carbonate that beer and we carbonate it, and then we take an additional time aging it in the keg, and we'll try it, you know, about at the two-week mark, and then every week after that until we think it's ready to serve. And so we have kegs of beer sitting in our cooler for months sometimes before we think it's ready to, to hit the tap line. And But, you know, we just believe that from a beer perspective that every beer has its time, and you're never going to get a beer from us that's 
you're going to say, hey, age this for a little while before you drink it. Now, right. the barley wine that we talked about. <laughs> <laughs> Keep talking about you this, may want to You may want to <laughs> age that one a little. I don't know. I don't know yet. But, uh, no, it's uh, it's one of those things where, yeah, if you're getting it from us, it's ready to drink. It is here. We can taste it. How, it is, how, it is how, here. Long, how long has it been in the barrel already? Uh, right now, it's only sitting in it. It's going on four months. Okay. Uh, so it still has some time in the yeah. barrel, uh, for sure. Yeah, I would, I would say probably you know, another, another handful of months at least. Actually, that's one of the questions I was going to ask about just barrel aging. The big issue a lot of brewers have is space. Obviously, you don't have too much space. There are barrels behind me. I thought they were decorative, but those I are, think these are the those barley are the, wine Those barrels. are full. Those are full. Those are so full. how many barrels can you guys uh, age? Well, uh, we've got these three, and we've got three more. <laughs> So uh, yep. right now we're going to say we're maxed at six. six. <laughs> <laughs> Massive <laughs> quantities. Right? Massive. Until, <laughs> until we do something ridiculous and figure out how to do more. I mean, that's what we do. I mean, that's part of what our nature is, is to, okay, I really like that. Let's figure out how to do it better or how to do more of it. So so we're, while, we're we'll talking about s- while we're talking about space, uh, do you have any sp- more land around here to add on to? Or are you just we do. this lot? We do. Okay. It's kind of hard to see, but when you pulled in, this, this lot that we're on is, is just over seven acres large. A little bit over two of those acres are buildable. And so we have quite a bit of a space to span if we want, if we want to do that. Not that we will or not that we won't. It's just we, we do have space to grow if we want to. So what are some of the long-term goals, hopes, dreams for our noggin? I feel like taking over the world is really number one. Same, same, yeah. same yeah. thing we do Dominate. every night. Yeah. Same thing we do every night. We're going to take over the world. I love the fact you guys know that. Yeah. I mean, I just, I just warmed my soul up a little bit. I'm not going to lie to you. I think it's the beer, um, man. <laughs> maybe that's you. Is it working? Uh, <laughs> I would say, you know, Jeff and I would tell you, we open this with the idea of organic growth and and just letting the brewery grow as the brewery grows, and I and I don't think we've I don't think we've we've stayed from that one bit, and you know, this brewery grows into be you know a, a thousand hectoliter brewery you know located in Germany, so be it. You know, that's what it is. <laughs> but I mean, we're not pushing for that. I'm just saying, you know what I mean? Like, it, we we don't have we don't have like oh, we're we're gonna get to a 15 barrel system, and that's Can it. Can we go somewhere enough. tropical? Uh, yes. Why would you want to jump? <laughs> Actually, yes. Yeah. Sorry. Let me, um, we're we're going to cut that out. We're going to cut that out. Yeah. We're going to cut that out and come back to the Virgin Islands. Uh, no, but yeah. As long we're as you pay for the airfare. Yeah. I mean, that, and that's kind of our thing, though, is if the brewery grows, it grows. And, you know, and that, we're not going to stop that from happening, but we're, we're going to let it happen organically. Um, and we're not going to force our brewery um, to grow in any stretch of the imagination. So we are looking at growth plans right now and what that means for us. I mean, obviously a two barrel system is not large by any stretch, but you know, really what the next step is for us and what makes the most logical sense. And so, so you're in a pretty prime location too. I mean, just from all the traffic you're know, passing you, how, how often do people just stumble upon you? All the time. Every day. Every day. Yeah. <laughs> Every day. During break, I, went, I ran up to my car really quick to grab uh, my charger and uh, there was a guy in the parking lot and said, hey, <laughs> is there a tap room in there? Can I come in? <laughs> And so it's, it's just nonstop. We, we get that. Uh, being right on the, one, the the major highway right here in Kenosha, you, you get a lot of people who see it swing off the highway and stop in. And so we, we see that quite a bit. For sure. Uh, so we said that we we're going to cycle back to the to the label art. And I, I think pre-dawn is a perfect way to, to kind of get into that. Uh, it's one of the coolest labels. I mean, I fell in love with it right away. It's it's the, you'll have to explain, the, uh, the girl with her teddy bear, uh, oh. which appears on a lot of the label art. But on this one... If you just take the label art for, for, you know, what it is, it's just the girl with her teddy bear with her back to you. But then you turn a black light on this label, and suddenly you we see call, all... We should call it a rabbit, though, not a teddy bear. Oh, I'm sorry. It's it a, rabbit. a rabbit. It is a rabbit. He, does, he, he <laughs> might get pissed off. He's right? actually it's watching the little white, right now. It's, <laughs> it's the white rabbit, He's and the, uh, he will take you down a hole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what rabbits like to do. <laughs> so is Show that me the rabbit where he touched it. Is that an Alice in Wonderland kind of kind of call out it's, or it's kind of funny because uh kevin and i since uh he was 21 i'm older mm-hmm. <laughs> we'd go out and do something stupid and every time we come back we'd always say it was this white rabbit right <laughs> and you know it <laughs> just kind of stuck yeah i mean that was almost the name of the brewery i think at one point yeah until someone else had it it's part of our it's part of who we are it's part of like something we would say all the time you know and everything we do here is kind of either family related or something that's to us. So it's very close and connected. And I think the, the, the clientele that come in can feel that. And, you know, it's usually one of us behind the bar, too. So you get a chance to talk to us every time. If it's not Kevin or I, there's uh, Justin, 
who is uh, our assistant brewer, and he uh, he's here quite often too. So I mean, everyone is kind of family. Even when you come in, we treat you like family. We say hi, we say bye. You know, it's one of those things. So every little piece of art that you see has some story for us, whether it's you know something from us from our past, from when we were kids, to a scary movie or anything that's uh, kind of goofy and off the wall is uh, where we like to like like to hang out. So there's there's at least four five with the girl in it at least as a as a as a child yeah as a child so it starts off we started off with and kevin should probably tell a story because he's a better storyteller than i am <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if you noticed that he's a better talker and storyteller <laughs> true. yeah so it, i don't think we have them in order do we kevin uh up there we do the top three we do so, so melting, melting metals, metals. So, and this yeah. is this is great radio uh we oh, will right. be we exactly. will be taking pictures so that you can uh, can reference all of these yeah <laughs> just look at the photo to the right. <laughs> uh, I think no, I'm just kidding. Left. So, uh, yeah, so, okay. The little girl, the white rabbit, is kind of following down the hole. Um, if, you, if you look at a lot of our artwork, um, to give you a little bit of insight, her name is Daphne. And if you look at her growing up in Shag and Wagon, she's there. But uh, I'll walk you through just a really quick story about Daphne and, and who she is with her, with her white rabbit. And if you look across Melting Meadows, Carney Ride, and Peaceful Protest, there's something evil going on in almost every single one of those uh, pieces of art. Uh, I like to call it Crayola Dark um, <laughs> as a term because people ask me, uh, are you guys really dark and scary? No, we're not really dark and scary. We're just kind of fun about it. Um, Melting Meadows, there's a town burning, and there's this skeleton riding the unicorn uh, floating into the sky. And, and, and you look at the rabbits holding the lighter. A little hard to see, but <laughs> did she start the fire? Or did the rabbit start the fire? Wow. A carny ride. Uh, there's this gaseous substance spewing out of a clown mouth before she goes into the ride. And the bunny's wearing a gas mask. So, so, so who let the <laughs> gas go? You know, type of thing. Uh, and then peaceful protest. You know, it's there's nothing about that that looks peaceful to me. Uh, pitchforks <laughs> and fire. And she's now wearing the gas mask, and the bunny's holding a sign. So, who who started the the protest? I'm not really sure. Um, it, it's peaceful protest because it's, it's hear no see no speak no, no if you evil, look at the yeah. flags yeah, the, the, yeah. <laughs> um, in the in the hop hop boom hop rocket rider and hop vala series you only see two pieces of artwork up right now but if you look behind the kegs in hop hop boom you, you see her wearing her viking helmet oh. and the bunny is still holding the lighter lighting the wick for the rocket so <laughs> so again who really who is really sending this insane bunny on a rocket ride it's always uh, the white rabbit's fault always the white rabbit's fault <laughs> And then you can see, you know, the white rabbit eventually, or the rabbit, the crazy rabbit eventually makes it to Hot Vala, which is uh, a play on, on, you know, Nor- Nordic, how do you say Nordic. it? Nordic. Nordic. Vala. 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 Nordic, yeah. yeah. But she does eventually grow up. And in Shaggy Wig and Mystery Bunt, you can see she's now fully grown. She's taken that crazy rabbit, and she's now wearing that rabbit's head as a, as a, <laughs> as a mask and uh, growing up. And if you look to the right of, of that, you can see the skirted Scotsman who died via an axe to his face. Well, who's holding the axe? Uh, <laughs> uh, Daphne is in, in Shag and Wagon. And then there's a story to loop and Fallout as well, too, that you'll see on our, on our cans eventually in the future. Um, but it's, it's really kind of a nod to, to Daphne as well as maybe Mad Max in, in the future. And, and Daphne's kind of ruling everything, and everybody's fighting over the, the Lupulin powder that's left. And so um, she's in charge of that. But you'll see more of that in the future labels. And so there's this whole storyline that's going on with her, and she's kind of our inspiration on some level for our fun the way we look at beer and being fun about it see that is fun that, it's you're right it's dark but in a crayola comic book dark in it kind of way. Yeah, right? dark. It's like, yeah. Be. yeah that should be yep. a comic book honestly yeah. Be fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and now she's here and she's here she's watching over us God. Yeah, that's not <laughs> creepy at all. No, Having not. a uh, mannequin no. in the corner. Yeah. Just like to have <laughs> Come here and work by yourself one time. Yeah, <laughs> what was that noise? That <laughs> was just the glycol chiller. It was just the glycol chiller. <laughs> yeah, so the next beer you guys have there is uh, Clown Casket, which is our Imperial Red. It's also the base for Peaceful Protest, which is our bourbon barrel age version of this beer. Uh, it is an Imperial Red, but it's also got the bitterness and hoppiness of an IPA. So you kind of get, the, in my version, the best of both worlds. Uh, you get this big malty beer that's got this nice little kick to it as well as a, a, a nice hoppy balance to it as well. So, Yeah, you still get the caramel flavors and the, the best parts of a red. And, yeah. you know, it's got decent balance for what I would call a red IPA. You know, it's got a yep. nice malty base. Yeah, there's no shortage of IBUs on this. No. It, it definitely, hits, yeah. Yeah. I love the bitterness. Wow, that's really good. 
Fantastic. It mixes in well with the caramel notes, too. It's just mm-hmm. right. tasty. You guys are located here in Kenosha on the far southern part of the state. Are there any other craft breweries here in Kenosha? And how do you guys deal with all those other breweries on the other side of the border down there in Illinois? That is a good question. So, yes, there are a few other breweries here in Kenosha. Um, we have Public Craft Brewing downtown as well as Rustic Road Brewing. There's also two new breweries opening up. Uh, Kenosha Brewing is opening up in the old Bull and Bear off of 80th Street. And then we also have uh, Kings and Convicts, which is opening up a production facility uh, as well as a customer facility um, moving up from Illinois just to the south of us here by maybe a half a mile at best. The, the craft scene in Kenosha is growing. It, the, the best thing about this industry is it's unlike any other industry you can be in, right? And what I mean by that is I don't know how many times a week, you know, folks from public or rustic or we're, we're talking to each other. Hey, 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 do you guys got any of this yeast? I need some yeast. Or <laughs> I, I, shoot, I'm, I'm low on this grain. Do you got it? And we're, we're, we're constantly helping each other out and we're collabing with each other, you know, and, and really us succeeding is them succeeding and, and vice versa. And so, you know, as craft grows, um, everyone should grow together. And, and that's the cool part of this. And we all want to see each other be successful. We, we don't want to see anyone fail. It's yeah. kind of, this would be a good segue and do a, like a, a plug for Kenosha Craft Beer Week. Uh, it's a great just, segue into right? that. May 11th is the start of it. And we host a party here. Well, we have four or five bands lined up, food trucks, and the place will be packed. There'll be a couple hundred people here. And then they go down to public on the following Saturday, and he closes out Craft Beer Week. So it goes from the 11th to the 18th, and uh, we have events every day. Every day. Uh, lined up, and we'll have to check. We'll have to get our website updated and get yeah. that out there. But we just met last week on doing a collab, and we always do a release on the Monday uh, at uh, a bar downtown called TG's. We just started talking about that, and I think uh, what was the end up? What did we end up choosing to do? Uh, are we allowed to say? I don't even know. Oh, breaking news! We already got, oh, got two beers. We're in giving details. out all kinds of I know. stuff. Today. You guys <laughs> gave me a few beers, and now I'm probably breaking all sorts of laws here in the craft beer industry. Uh, we are actually working on a juicy, uh, hazy IPA uh, collab between the three breweries here in Kenosha that are currently up and running right now. Please tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we're working on. The recipe's still in development, so there's not much more I can tell you other than that. But no, that's awesome. Um, the, the big thing that we're working on is is every brewery is kind of bringing that one hop they use more often than not to the table. It, oh, it should awesome. be a, it should be a fun fun little experiment. Do you want me to address Illinois? Yeah, and how you won the uh, border war. Yeah, and so much of the Packers are so much better. Right. Uh, At least after yeah. today. <laughs> <laughs> today was a great day for Packer Nation. Yeah, um, no, so yeah, we do have some friends south of the border. You know, Only Child, Zoom Beer, um, Harbor uh, are all just right across the border. And the, and the cool thing about this area is people kind of go to all six and, and they get to kind of visit them all and, and, and see them all. We're, we're great friends with them all. Um, you know, whether it's Ben from Only Child or, or Kyle over um, at Harbor or whatnot, we, we've done a couple of events with them where we've done poker runs between poker all six breweries, all six breweries yeah. uh, where we've rent buses and people just hopped on, hopped off uh, the, of the bus tours. <laughs> we haven't collabed with them yet, but I'm hoping to in the future. But no, they're, they're again, really great partners. Uh, yeah, we did win Border War, overall. which was fun. Overall, favorite brewery, uh, which is what we won, uh, which was a lot of fun for us. We had a good time that Saturday. Actually, Jeff and, and his wife, Cindy, got to, to go run that event that day, and I was actually up at Third Space that day for the IPA Fest. And so, <laughs> had we won IPA Fest and won oh, Border Wars, it would have been amazing. Been a sweep. <laughs> it would have been a sweep, and it would have been a long night. But no, winning Border Wars a was a lot night. of fun. It was. It, it's a good. It, and again, I think it just goes to show. Just I think we're really starting to build that brand here in Kenosha, and, and a lot of folks are, are, are liking what we're doing, and and we're proud of that. And it's cool to see that. And so, we're already um, had the have the gears turning about what we're bringing to Border War this year, and we're we're hoping to maybe turn some heads and, and, and do some shock value stuff. So it'll be fun. You gotta defend that. You gotta ground. defend the title. Right. I know. You gotta defend gotta the title. Keep, keep the cup. We're gonna roll in there like it's a Racine prom. If you've never seen that on TV, <laughs> we're gonna rent some really fancy car and just roll in with like hats on and stuff. It's gonna be amazing. Uh, any plans to get into uh, some other beer fests? Uh, you know, there's always um, uh, great taste in the Midwest on the horizon. Those kind of uh, bigger fests. I, I know. I we, saw you at uh, Firkin Fest last year, which great was a lot taste, of fun. Let us in. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Take us off the waiting list. Yes. Uh, yes, we are on a uh, waiting list for uh, Great Taste. Uh, we've been on it for two years, and last last year we were hoping to get into the lottery pick, but uh, unsuccessful again. Yep. Uh, but yeah, we do um, uh, Great Lakes Brew Fest at the Racine Zoo. Uh, we just got back from February from Fond du Lac Brew Fest. 
hoping to be able to get in the beer lovers uh, up in uh, Bayshore Mall. Bayshore Mall. Mall. Mm -hmm. Uh, We were there two years ago, and last year, uh, I don't think we were able to get in. We didn't have time. Uh, But uh, we're hoping to be able to do that again this year. So, I mean, we try to hit four or five. We'll do Um, Fest. We're in Fest. Fest, Fest, IPA Fest. Um, So, yeah, I mean, we'll we'll get into them. Border Wars. um, Border Wars were there. Or there. Got to defend. (laughs) Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, we try to hit at least... I'd say four, five, six, maybe. Yep. Yeah, we well, usually we usually wait for the invite. So if you're out there listening and want to invite us, uh, hit us up. <laughs> <laughs> My number is one nine hundred. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Joking. Eight six seven. Five. Crazy stories. As we're wrapping up here, uh, tell us a little bit about when you first started this. Any other fun stories? Any craziness that happened? Cops called. <laughs> <laughs> We've, we've, uh, we've had the call the cops we've once. Had it, we've had them here. We had the fire department here. Just <laughs> medical emergency ago. was medical nothing, emergency. nothing other than that. But uh, or uh, twice actually, right. medical emergency. I can say that uh, we thought we when we opened up we thought we could go without a walk-in cooler, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that was part of the delay because the first <laughs> terrible experience, first three <laughs> batches of beer. We couldn't cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the and then we was summer, was like we, 90 we, degrees. Remember we froze oh. them in kegs? Oh, yeah. We, <laughs> we put had, them in a freezer. We had chest freezers up. And we oh, froze so them. It was so bad. <laughs> we, we so home oh. started this. Oh, it was so bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the lessons we've learned. Um, right. I'm trying to think of what else. I, I, no, it's, I feel like it's just I mean, there's, week there's, by there's, week and for the so next much, three days you're so talking about. There's so much that you learn. I mean, even you know between the grains and where you ordered them from, you know, there's mistakes that you make. You're like, oh, my God, what are we doing? Hops that we pre-ordered for three years and we're going oh my god what are we going to do with this you, you know guys, do you guys know that in I, kenosha i love you everyone who works for kenosha i love you um <laughs> but do you guys know that to cut down certain trees in kenosha you need a license what? Yeah. <laughs> permit uh, permit a permit, a permit. Uh, i'm like wait a minute we gotta have a permit to cut down a tree hey. he's like yeah yeah we should uh, no but i mean it was kenosha it was okay but i'm for for people yeah. for I'm getting, I'm getting the, <laughs> getting the X to the note. Oh, no, I'm it was, it was su- okay. That's what don't, I'll say. What I'll don't say piss for off me. the inspectors. Uh, no, but what I'll, say, what I'll say, what I'll say, I'm saying I never would do it, yeah. but apparently you need to purpose. Yeah, it was <laughs> insane. Like I would, what I, what I thought was insane. So I, Jeff grew up in this world. I did not. I was, I was in uh, hmm. Medicare insurance. So when you guys hit 65 and have questions, I'm all for it. I'm here for you. <laughs> but um, it was like, what? Oh, we got to have a what? To cut down a what? Are you serious? Like I was just I, the amount of permits I was just I just learned so much to that process. You know, I was, I was really shocked, and I, I, I gained so much perspective and, and, and appreciation for what home builders and, and commercial builders and what Jeff does every day. It's 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 such a complicated world. And we I, did salvage the tree, though. We so did uh, tap handles, tap handles, um, and tables coming, tables, tables are coming. So we, we it's a hickory tree that we had to take down, big old hickory tree that was right in the middle of yeah. where the parking lot was. Either you built around it, which I'm like, tree branches fall off a hickory tree all the time. Mm-hmm. I'm not building around. Yeah. <laughs> so we took that thing, we took it down, but then we had it all boarded out. Which, <laughs> yeah. Which funny story was is Kevin's garage smelled like a barn for uh, well over. Yeah, a year. if you board out hick- if you board out hickory trees, it smells like a horse barn. <laughs> it, it, it does. It's, it's it's insane. It's like it's kind of cool, but pro, pro at the tip. Same time, <laughs> like, <laughs> my port. That's my, my, my on FYI. The for the I literally like every day. My wife would be like, seriously, <laughs> <laughs> the kitchen smells like horse piss. <laughs> uh, it's for the cause, babe. <laughs> you know, it's, it was what it came down to. But yeah, it's uh, yeah. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, any uh, any final words for our listeners? Anything that uh, you know you want to tell them what it's like coming into our noggin for the first time? Uh, yeah, you know, give them some reason to come on out to uh, Kenosha. All right. So when you pull up to our noggin, and there's <laughs> garage doors and a man door, and there's absolutely no windows, but the door does say "Open the door, Richard." I want you to open the door. <laughs> There's so many people who come in. I'm like, I think that's a biker place. <laughs> it's, it's not. You need to come on in, open up the door. We're going to greet you. We're going to say hello, and we're going to feed you some great beer. You can come if you're a biker, too. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I will say it's much more inviting in the summer when you guys got the, the, the big doors bay open. doors open and the picnic tables outside. Yeah. But it's it's nice and, and it's friendly and, and, and very cozy in here in the winter as well. Yeah, we do have plans to address some of that. Um, and I'll add on to what Jeff said is, you know, it's it's I tell people all the time right now we're Las Vegas. You come in here. There's no <laughs> windows. There's no <laughs> clocks. Uh, we, so we could pump oxygen if we wanted. To. <laughs> Not saying we don't. Um, no, just uh, 
<laughs> yeah, come on and hang out. Um, it, we tend to we feel like we're a fun blast to hang out with. And the cool thing about here on a small scale system is every week when you come in, there's probably something new on tap. And, and so there's always something new to try, whether it be a first run beer for us or something that we do all the time. And so uh, we're, we we love feedback. We love hearing what customers have to say. And 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 so come in and check us out. Awesome. So I'm gonna put Kevin on the spot though. Is uh. Is Shake and Wagon ready for this weekend? Ooh, ooh, on the spot. Uh, I haven't tried it. We're hoping that our Shake and Wagon mystery bunch uh, will be ready for this Saturday. So we have a big um, uh, event going on this Saturday for St. Patty's Day, and uh, our Irish Red will come back out, and we're hoping to release, uh, re-release our Shake and Wagon mystery bunch, which is our Wild Berry Milkshake IPA. Oh, nice. Uh, and so, uh, again, we try it. If it's ready, if it's drinking good, we'll we'll bring it back out. We'll, we'll taste it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's very respectable. We uh, we we like the approach that you guys are going with that organic approach, especially in a local market. Seems to be the way to go. So, thank you guys so much for uh, for sitting down with us and uh, spend some time sharing some beers. Uh, but uh, it looks like we are out of beer for the moment. So uh, for me, for Alex, this is Jim. This is Jeff. Andy here. Jesus. Kevin. And this has been another solid non fail production. There's no